This is a HP 350G2. Now this came with a batch of other laptops that all apparently have motherboard faults. As you can see, I have no keyboard with this, I have no screen. It's basically just the motherboard and the, sh the remains of the chassis. Now, this is really worth nothing, so it's not really worth fixing. However, it's all I have for this week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out, run through it and uh, see what we can learn from it. Well, this is what the board looks like when I took it out of the chassis. So we're going to start where we usually start, down at the DC in jack. Just a quick note on this, guys. It turns out that there's actually nothing wrong with this laptop, even though it was sent to me as supposedly having a motherboard fault. However, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep running through my regular troubleshooting procedure just for practice. Now, before injecting power onto the board, I need to be sure that there's no short in the input section. So I just want to do a few cursory checks with my multimeter in diode mode. So this is where our positive input comes in. Uh, I have the connector for this and the red wire actually comes on to this pin but we can identify it from the fact that there's the two inductors here. So I want to take a few measurements on that positive input with my multimeter in diode mode. So with my multimeter in diode mode I place my red probe to ground and with my black probe I take a measurement at the input pin and I find that it measures 1.658 in diode mode. So there's no short on the input. From the pin of our DC input jack, it then comes up and onto these two inductors here. So if I take a quick measurement on the other side of that inductor, I find that it measures 1.658, so there's no short here either. So where does it go from here? Well, as you can see, it looks like there are four vias at this part on the board, so it seems to carry our positive voltage through to the other side of the board. So let's follow it through. On the other side of the motherboard, I can find these four vias right here. So our positive voltage comes through the board here and onto this MOSFET. So here are the four drain pins of this MOSFET. So I'm going to take a measurement right here. So introducing my multimeter in diode mode once again, I place my red probe to ground and my black probe to the drain pin of that first MOSFET and I find that it measures 1.658. So no short up to this point. Next I'm going to measure between the two MOSFETs, which is at this point here. The two sources of the two MOSFETs are back to back here. So I place my probe to the source pin of MOSFET 1 and I find that I measure 1.738. So there's no short between the MOSFETs here. Next I want to take a measurement after this second MOSFET, which as you can see here goes onto a current sense resistor and that's our main power rail. So you can test it anywhere along here. I will check it at this point here on the current sense resistor. And what I find is that it measures 0.465 so what do we know at this point well we know that there's no short at the DC input jack we have followed the path of where our positive input voltage comes and we followed through to this side of the board and established that there's no short at the first MOSFET there's no short between the two MOSFETs and there's no short after the second MOSFET which is the main power rail so that means that we can safely plug it in and see what happens when we try and power it on Watching other people's channels, I find it curious as to how many of them just go straight to the current sense resistor, find a short there, inject voltage and find a capacitor blown. I've certainly had that situation, but it seems like they get, at a, they get that type of fault a much higher percentage of the time than I do, for sure. I've switched on power to the board, so we now need to start taking measurements in volts DC. So I switch my multimeter to volts DC in 20 volt range. I place my black probe to ground and we can start taking measurements. So where I'm going to start is at this point right here at the drain pin of the first MOSFET. So I place my probe to any one of the drain pins of the first MOSFET and I find that it measures 19.64 volts. So our voltage is good up to the first MOSFET. If this MOSFET is switched on, it should be allowing our 19.64 four volts through from our drain to our source pins. So I measure up my source pin here and I find that it measures 19.64 volts. So the first MOSFET is switching on and it's permitting my voltage through from drain to source. Similarly, if our second MOSFET is switched on, it should be permitting our 19.64 volts through from our source pins to our drain pins. So I'm going to measure the drain pins of the second MOSFET. So placing my probe to the drain pins of the second MOSFET, I find that it measures 19.64 volts. So our voltage is good up to this point. The last measurement in this section is just to verify that we have our 19.64 volts after our current sense resistor. I don't know 
if anybody has ever seen one of these fail but they very very rarely fail so I place my probe to the other side of the current sense resistor and I measure 19.64 volts so with our laptop plugged in and powered on our main power roll uh, our main power rail is present next I decided to check on the power button now the connector for the power button is actually right beside where our input section is this CN201 is where the little daughter board with the power button connects to the main motherboard so on this we have six pins right here I'm going to mark them out now we don't have a schematic so I don't know which of these six pins is for our power button however what I can do is I can place my black probe to ground and in voltage mode go along one by one and take voltage measurements of each one we've seen on the other motherboards previously that usually there's 3.3 volts or maybe 3 volts on the power button then when you press the power button that goes to zero and when you release the power button again it goes back to 3 volts or 3.3 volts so what I found was that on pin number 4 when I measure here that is 3.110 volts when I plugged in the daughter board with the little power button on it and press the power button that pin 4 goes to 0 and then when I release the power button again it goes back to 3.110 volts so it appears that our power button is working and conveniently on this motherboard our super IO is right beside where our power button connects in now I'm going to assume that the power button signal is making it to our super IO so I really I just want to check and make sure it's getting its 3.3 .3 volts input voltage so we can measure around the capacitors here and we should hopefully find 3.3 .3 volts so if I go to this pin up here I can see this is actually pin number 127 which comes out to this capacitor right here so if I place my probe onto this capacitor I find that it has 3.30 volts on it so our super IO is also getting the correct input voltage so what do we know at this point well we know that our main 19 volts power rail is good we know that our 3.3 volts always on power is good at the power button we're getting 3.11 volts when I press the power button that is going to zero and then returning to 3.11 volts when I release the power button so the power button appears to be working fine and at our super IO chip I am measuring 3.3 volts at one of the capacitors so we know that that is getting the correct input voltage as well so I guess the next step is just to hook it up to an external HDMI monitor and try powering it on okay so as you can see I've connected my HP power adapter and there is an LED on the port I've also connected up an external display that's my Samsung 24 inch screen right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the power button and see what happens so I press the power button okay so we've got an LED our fan is spinning would you believe it okay so it is actually coming on Now this was sold to me as being faulty with a motherboard fault so I'm not sure if somebody just didn't have something plugged in properly or had dodgy memory but it's certainly working for me here and that is all I've got for this week I contemplated not posting this video because there's essentially no fault to fix but look it might be of use to somebody who has the same laptop and wants to work out how to troubleshoot a fault I'm struggling for content also so that's the reason I wanted to get this video posted or just get any video posted this week I've ordered five motherboards which are described as faulty and I'm expecting those during the week so hopefully that will provide some better content for the channel that we can all learn from I'll be back next week with another video. Hope you all have a good week.